Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to what is a surprisingly lovely afternoon for the UK at this time of year. I've got myself a cup of tea and uh, this will be the first sit down video for quite a while actually. So I hope you enjoy and uh, well, roll the intro. <laughs> So, what did I want to talk about? Well, I have finished my year abroad and um, as I promised a couple of commenters in, it would have been January now, um, I am going to give a bit of a recap of what I was up to essentially for the whole year. Now, um, if you want any more details of what I've been doing, uh, then there's a whole year abroad playlist you can check out on my channel. So, do head on over. But I just wanted to go through and sort of give an overview of both my placement in France and in Argentina. Again, if you want to know how I found them, etc., I would recommend going in to look at my previous videos. So let's start with France. Now, I have a couple of questions that were commented about six months ago now, well, more than that, seven, eight months ago now, uh, that I'm going to go through for both France and Argentina. Uh, and the first one is, uh, what did I think about my placement in France helping my studies? Now, the point of the year abroad is to really develop your fluency with the language that you're studying and improve your speaking ability because that's something that is really challenging to practice in Oxford or at university in the UK, right? Now, I'm very lucky to have gone to a French school for one and a half years when I was six or seven uh, and have had fantastic teachers at secondary school. So my level of spoken French was already very high. Uh, spending a year and a half with French kids solely speaking French was really helpful. Um, but going to France to work in this company really did help my sort of colloquial language skills. It really helped me sort of learn how people actually speak. Uh, I don't think there was a vast improvement in sort of grammatical structures I used and things like that. But uh, my language definitely did improve. I probably speak more la naturally now um, with far more range, maybe not far more range of vocabulary because I'm sort of starting to sort of forget a lot of what I was saying, but uh, with more range of vocabulary and just generally sounding a bit more fluent, I would say. Well, the second question is what I thought of it career-wise. Was it helpful? Now, at the time, I was, it felt as though I was sort of just writing a lot of emails and answering a lot of phone calls, but having in the past two or three weeks started applying to jobs for when I graduate, I've realised that a lot of the tasks I was doing and a lot of the situations I was put in were and are really helpful for CV writing, interview questions and cover letter writing. Um, so actually I am really grateful for the experience it gave me, um, something completely different to anything I've ever done before. So yeah i mean it was just kind of good in that way i would say the third question is what did i feel like living in france was like now i have to say i was in forcalquier a little village about an hour north of aix en provence in provence i was there from august to january so i experienced sort of all seasons and i have to say it suited me very nicely i was lucky enough to have my road bike there uh, you can see some videos that came out from that and it was, I mean, the countryside was beautiful and really the running and the cycling I did there really helped me manage some sort of personal issues that I was going through at the time. In addition to that, sort of the pastry based breakfasts, um, <laughs> going out for lunch with your colleagues once a week and sort of generally taking it nice and steady at weekends really suited me. Mm, those things aren't necessarily uh, solely what French people do, but sort of the mixture of not being at university, not studying and being in such a beautiful place that just felt quite tranquil really just was a nice change from Oxford, I would say. Um, I think I really did suit where I was living quite nicely. Um, and the final question is sort of how did I come out of it generally? So as I mentioned, I had quite a few personal um, problems at the time and, you know, that made things quite challenging at times. 
Uh, in addition, I got on really, really, really well with certain people at the company I was working for and not so well with others, um, which did not help things. And overall, I would say the experience was genuinely 50-50. I had a lot of lovely chocolate. I met some great people. I did some fantastic cycling, but uh, both things going on in my life and at work as well made certain things quite challenging, I will say. Um, but overall, I think looking back at it now, definitely a positive experience. So let's move on to Argentina. A lot fresher in my mind, uh, perhaps less time to reflect on it, but definitely more likely to remember things, let's put it that way. Now, I don't think I've said this before, but uh, I definitely probably wouldn't have gone ever to work in South America if it had not been for this placement. But I will start off by saying that if the economic situation changes in Argentina, because it is quite difficult at the moment for a lot of people, then I would genuinely consider to go and live in Argentina and work in Argentina because it is fantastic. I had such a great time there. Everyone I met was amazing and I, I was overwhelmingly positive. I did so much traveling. You can see videos from that on my channel and I just had an incredible time. So I think that gives you the general overview part of sort of my experience in Argentina. Uh, looking at the more sort of specific questions, helping my studies hugely. As I said, my French was at a quite high level already, whereas my Spanish was not quite at the same point. And being in Argentina really, really, really helped my language skills. Um, I, l I became a lot more confident speaking fluently, complex sentences, grammar, and yeah, just great. I've come back with a slight Argentine accent. Some people think I sound well, some people in Argentina thought I was French, some people thought I was Italian, some people thought I was English. People in Argentina thought I was Spanish as well. It's, so I think what we've now discovered is that my accent is a mix of everything, but I definitely, definitely improved my Spanish a lot while I was there. So I'm very happy about that. Hopefully I can keep it up until Trinity term and my oral exam, um, and hopefully beyond that as well, because Spanish is a wonderful language. I do apologize about the sun. I'm gonna be squinting a little bit now. Um, Career-wise, Argentina just sort of confirmed to me that I love teaching. I had so much fun with the students there. They were all fantastic. I mean, you can't have great days every day, but generally the experience um, at work was as positive as it was outside of work. So I. I can't complain on that front. Uh, so that sort of makes me feel as though if at any point I want to stop whatever I'm doing, I can go to teaching, not as a sort of last resort, far from it. I still want to learn new things. I still want to experience new things. But when I've had enough of experiencing new things, I can go back to something that I really, really love. So it just confirmed that for me. I helped quite a lot in my secondary school in the first two years of uni. And yeah, this placement in Argentina really did help me understand the, the pleasure that I can derive from teaching, which is great. Life in Argentina, I, I enjoyed it quite a lot. I'll be honest, I, I don't think there was anything about it that I didn't like. Um, as I've mentioned many, many times, the desserts in Argentina were mind-blowing genuinely fantastic and uh, I will happily go back to have a choco torta or a torta oreo or um, I mean I'm doing them a disservice like dulce de membrillo dulce de batata there's so many things I mean dulce de leche in anything if I'm honest is fantastic um, they make so many amazing things that oh, anytime um, also uh, lomito typical of Cordoba where I was Oh, I could have one of those. I feel like one right now. So, um, yeah, I really did suit life there, I think, even though I perhaps didn't have sort of the most typical routine. Yeah, overwhelmingly positive. So there we go. I feel like this has happened all very quickly, but I'm sure I've been speaking for a while. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm sure I've opened out 
up a lot of questions uh, based on this. So feel free to put those in the comment section below. I will get back to you. Um, sorry to the person who commented asking for a recap video eight months ago. It, it has now come. I don't know if you're listening, but there we go. And subscribe if you haven't already. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I will see you next time, probably in Oxford. Stay tuned.